right through here. Don't worry about the light colours in here. We're going to put those on later. All we're after at the moment are these darker colours coming on right through behind here. I'm going to leave some little bits of light here just to show my drawing because these little bits of light I need to know where they are. So I'm going to leave just one or two little bits of light just, just blowing through just so I know where they were. And then I need to come into my much cooler darks again. So up here I'm coming back to my Prussian blue which is such a useful colour really blocking that up into here, bringing that down into this this cool blue, cooler blue behind here, cooler than the purple. And then suddenly we start to hit some much cooler colours again and we come into the ultramarine, which is a beautiful colour. Look at that ultramarine against this, isn't that gorgeous? Ultramarine coming down into here behind these colours. And we could start to just play a little bit of those leaves even now. I'm going to take a little bit of um, cobalt blue and just bring those over in short strokes just to get the feeling of these leaves behind here a little bit more already just to show you what can happen. And we're taking with that cobalt and bring it as we did down here, down this tree, across here a bit, just letting the light show. This is much darker here so I'm going to take some of this deep Prussian blue and add it into here and then it's very warm against this cool here so I'm going to make this very dark down there. Take some green, some sap green in this case and blend it into my all the way down to here. Suddenly there there's a little bit of light green uh, showing on one of the leaves. I'll just put that in now for fun. So we'll put in a couple of bits of green there just to show those leaves reflecting down there already. And look at the difference in those colours. We're getting the effect of light already. Being with pure colour, I want to get all of this dark into here. Take that green I've got here now in the vertical strokes. I'm going for a slightly warmer dark here now. I'm taking my purple. I'm going to add a bit of uh, emerald green to the purple. Just come in with that up here. Mixed colour. So I'm actually getting a mixed colour of the emerald into the purple and I'm mixing it on the canvas, not just mixing it ahead of time, I'm actually mixing it on here. I'll take a little bit of um, cadmium orange now. I'm just going to work that in in short strokes down here. I'm going to let it blend in slightly just to give the feeling of this, these warm leaves behind. So this is my Prussian blue again, strong Prussian blue. Put the lights over this later, bring that blue back up into here as well. Big strokes right down here and it gets more orange, I'm going to put more red coming down into the colour here. It's my background colours remember, a bit more green into it here. Just a touch of water on my brush occasionally because the paint gets just too thick and gungy. We're getting rid of all of this white canvas. That's the main thing here. We'll take some Prussian again and come back into this with some crisscross strokes to feel this area of the, of the leaves. So we're just starting to feel some of the textures into these leaves now. Yeah, there's a little bit of white there because I know that's where my lighter colours going to go shortly. Some of my reds. I've got, while I'm doing this, in fact, I'll do just that. I'll put these reds in. This is where these bits of highlight are going to shine across here. It's almost an abstract painting. And the beauty of doing things like this is, and exploring and experimenting, is that we can suddenly turn up with something that uh, we didn't expect. In other words, I can turn out a painting here that I think, oh wow, I'll just leave that as it is, I won't take that any further. Yep, so I'll put it back. Magenta tends to sink with these colours that um, isn't a heavy body and of course it's not a heavy body it's going to sink back a bit so I'm just putting a bit more of it back in again. Well I've got it on my brush, we'll use it elsewhere. This now, we can put light in between there later, let's just paint it out. I'm putting a mid-tone here behind this light bit of sky. Even though it's not actually there, it will give me a, a nice mid-tone to put the sky over later. I need to lose all of this white canvas that's the main thing at the moment. Can't paint with this white canvas here. And I'm going to put this colour, lovely light uh, purple magenta in the sky. Letting some of the dark 
come into it, doesn't matter because I'm going to put light over it later. Just to build up some colour at the moment, I just need to get rid of this white so it's important to me to, to lose the white and get colour in. It's such a pleasurable way to paint, that's the main point I'm getting at here, is that uh, this is just so much fun to do. Now back to our darks again, we'll take some burnt sienna, whack it in here, burnt sienna and purple, funny old mixed no, burnt sienna and purple, I'm going to whack that warm in over here, and I haven't completely mixed it, as you see I've still got some of the light magenta on my brush even from just now. Now I'm going to take my blue, back into that with the, with the blue for my tree here. It's very, very dark, strong tree, which is much cooler than this one, because that one was purple. You think, what's he doing? He's just slapping this paint on. How does he see these colours? Really look for the slight difference in whether they are bluer or browner. Leave a little bit of white just here and there, because I know I'm going to want to put my mid-tones into those shortly. And just so I know where the shapes are again. As I come down here, we're hitting into some beautiful blues again, and we're playing the warm against the cool blues. Down to here, right through, then we're going to suddenly go warmer. We need that burnt sienna again. Now, we've got most of these darks worked up, I can just start to work in a few of the lighter warms. So it's background colours, it's looking through all of these lighter greens and these colours to try and see the background colours to each of them. And you be as careful as you feel you need to be. You haven't got to be exact with any of this. See how we're getting the effect of light even with these little strokes. And just to say, many people would think, oh I've got this far, I quite like it like that, I'm not even going to bother going further. I'll just keep it abstract just like that leaf shapes. So uh, we've now done stage one. I'm going to start moving on to stage two by moving into the, the greens. I'm just starting to work up some of these lights behind here. I'm working with the cool greens at the moment. So these are my turquoises. That means I can get quite nice leaf shapes but they're not quite as sharp as it would be with a filbert edge. The beautiful effect we can get of almost semi-abstract. Just crossing now to start to feel the texture of these trees. I'm going to go down to a smaller flat in a minute. So I say if I can get away with it I won't even bother with a filbert. We'll just carry on with the change down brushes. Come down to number four now, which is about a quarter inch, and uh, I'm actually going to start on some of the greens. We've already been talking about greens and using the greener blues, the more turquoise colours. We've got our warm blues to purples right through here, and then we're coming up to these greener colours. So now let's take some emerald green. And a wee touch of yellow ochre, which is a pretty warm green still. We're going to go much more yellow and lighter yet. I just want to test this out and see how this looks because it's quite warm. And we'll just bring that through here in smaller strokes. Again, I can keep vertical at the minute, but I can start to explode these strokes outwards now. So it's still a bit technique -y. we're just playing with these shapes and colours in between and around and through here. Yeah. Don't be afraid to bring them across. So it's just knowing when and how, isn't it? I'm making vertical strokes and I'm just starting to use some more cascading strokes now. Still using the tip of the brush. So I'm going to try and get away with my flats as much as possible. I may not even have to use the shoulders uh, on this at all, we'll see. I'm going to paint in between the branches of this tree here and just get the feeling of branches by 
using the greens in between this darker colour here. We're bringing out some of the darks by painting the lights around them like this. Enjoy following this lesson step by step as much as you can. It won't have, one of the reasons I'm doing this deliberately this way and not making it too specific is it's going to force you to experiment and explore with these colours and to force you to mix and match and find your own without my saying you must mix 50% of this and 20% of that. I'm um, deliberately leaving it a little bit confusing to make you work. And we turn what is a nice, but not that interesting picture, into something far more fascinating. So an actual lesson for you then here, as I paint these little marks in, highlights, I'm painting by highlights, aren't I now? Gradually building up these lighter and lighter bits of highlight. Again, I hope you can see this lovely effect of light we're getting here. And this very light uh, magenta pink I've got, I'm going to pick up on that again. And I want a bit more detail with it. So using my little quarter inch brush, pick up on this cool pink magenta and we'll start to just work some of these highlights into here. So already we're starting to get a bit more detailed, just here and there. I can bring in a bit more texture here now, the same colours, but bring them through the background, breaking them through into, into little marks. And I'm going to get a, a feeling of these leaves cascading through here now. So we're moving into, deeply into our stage three now as I start to work these lights. both the vertical and horizontal strokes through here. And showing the trees by silhouetting them slightly. But we're still using pure colour. Four really is just finishing off because three sort of blends in with the other areas. I can use the brush very thinly like this to indicate little branches catching the light as well. Here and there look. These areas flood out here. We're not just painting with the verticals, we're going to paint some of these out both vertically and downwards. You might say well that's easier said than done, but be intuitive. I'm pushing you to feel your own way. I'm not just going to have you painting my numbers for me. I don't do that with my lessons. I make the students learn best way is to do it yourself. Let's look at this figure because we, we need to get her in, don't we? So I'm just going to take a bit of ultramarine blue and just paint that in there. Pure, just a bit of pure colour. Just there. And a little bit of Prussian. I'll keep it quite thin on my brush. If we can just flick her in. And there's our figure almost there in one go. Darker up there. And look, we have a figure just with a couple of brush strokes. I use a tidy brush just to put a little bit of um, light onto the back there later. At the moment, I just want it a little bit darker just here. And we've got our little figure. Right, not little figure. Simple as that, just a couple of brush strokes. Now let's carry on with our, um, our greens. And I want to go to a lighter green. So I'm going to take my... No, so I'm going to go to a, a, a more orangey green. I'm going to take my um, chrome green. So I'm going to go chrome yellow and um, some... green and just start to bring in some of these very warm greens here now. Much more yellowy greens up into here. Sunlight. 
we touch a white into that just make it a little bit lighter let's start to really feel this sunlight coming down through here with these warm so very warm yellow greens here I don't think I'm going to need my filters at this rate. I can just do it with the smaller flats. A bit more orange, get some cadmium, mix some white with that, and we'll really get these autumn awesome colours going. Really push these beautiful oranges and yellows. So we're really finding this use of warm, and cool greens and yellows, blue. I want to go a bit greener there. Um, let's just pick up on these more emerald colours that are just coming through here. Slightly blue and more emerald amongst these. A bit of turquoise into it even, just to make it a fraction cooler against the against the yellows and the greens. Playing with these colours. So emerald green now. Most onto our final stages already. Right. Now I want some more warms. So I'm going to go to my reds and oranges and use some neat cadmium red just down here. Pick up some of these warmer colours. Maybe push this a bit. Look at the difference that that makes. And we need to bring some of this into those greens, so I'm going to just mix it, deaden it down a little bit with um, some of that earlier yellow and just bring some of this orange subtly up into here. Or just to tip it across the tops of some of these trees here. Right, and I want to go to my stage four, which is my lightest colours of all. I could go to a very light blue and cream. I'm going to use two here. I'm going to use um, a very light cream to start off with. So just white with the tiniest touch of lemon yellow. And see how that goes in. Oh, very light colours amongst this here yeah. and ever such a small touch. I should really be using a I will use a fine brush, I don't not. I'm going to use my little rounds. I haven't needed to use it until now. I'm going to use a little round brush just to capture the highlight on the side of her hair here. There and the other side. And maybe a little bit just down one side of her bag here. Because she's, that is important there. Maybe we can have a little bit of light between her legs as well, just here. So, fine brush is needed for that, but not otherwise. Back we go again, finding these little bits of light. To make to finish in stage four. White, lemon, yellow, stage four. So we could have finished it earlier, you could have called it finished earlier. And that's your choice. I've decided to go just that little bit further into this and I would call that picture, for me, almost done. And that's it, that's our stage four, final stage. In making our autumn scene as the figure walks away from us. This is quite nice having that pole there, it just gives it that little added Depth. Um, what I'm going to do is just come back with a few darks. I've got that dark on my brush. I noticed we could have a few more branches and things here and there. Just, I think it'd be nice just to bring in the edge of the brush. And look how we can do that with these flats or filled. But either one would work. We can just bring some of these branches through. Just give the feeling of the tangled web.